What up, Melvin7 here. Today I'm bringing you another transfer rumours video. Now, the reason I haven't in the last few days isn't because I haven't wanted to. There's just been very little to talk about. Like, I picked the wrong month to take a month off from YouTube because there was transfers every other day, but now it's died down a little bit. Uh, you know, we've <laughs> we've had the ridiculous moves like Neymar, Lukaku, Morata, Lacazette, like all, all at once. And then... Um, yeah, it's been very quiet on the transfer front, but a couple of little stories that have been breaking recently, so I thought I'd do a video. I didn't really talk about Coutinho to Barcelona very much. Um, I mean, I, I did in terms of the targets that they could replace Neymar with, but um, yeah, it looks as though that could actually happen. Uh, Coutinho wants to move to Barcelona. Uh, he wants Liverpool to accept um, an offer, which I suppose... He feels is fair. Like I think Barcelona are willing to pay 100 million euros, which is more than fair for Coutinho, even in this market. Good player, but that that's a lot of money. So uh, yeah, it, it, he also said that Barcelona would be the only team he would want to leave uh, leave Liverpool for. Kind of like what Suarez said. So I suppose he's being quite uh, respectful in that. Uh, respect, respectful in that respect. Not really the greatest sentence there, but y you know what I mean. So. It looks as though it's more likely that he will leave Liverpool than stay. I know Klopp wants him to stay, but with the owners they've got at uh, FSG, especially with that kind of money, I don't think Klopp's going to have much of a say. It's like uh, Conte at Chelsea or any manager at Chelsea, really. Um, it seems as though you know the manager can want something, but it's the board or the director of football or the owner who gets the final say over things. And then uh, that can hurt the manager sometimes. So it looks as though Coutinho could probably will be moving to Barcelona. Uh, there's also uh, the the matter of another former Liverpool target, uh, Virgil van Dijk. He's handed in a transfer request. And uh, it looks as though, well, Chelsea and Liverpool are the main contenders for his signature. There's talks of Man City as well. But it looks as though Liverpool, if they can somehow get away with actually coming back into it because, of course, they uh, had to refute all attempts to sign him because uh, Southampton threatened to them with legal actions for what they called illegal uh, attempts to sign the player. And, um, yeah, I suppose they would push charges if Liverpool did go against what their club statement said and actually go back after Van Dijk, even if he has had it in a transfer request. So, although it's supposedly where he wants to go... I think it's more likely he'd end up at Chelsea because they don't have any of these issues. And I'm telling you something, like Southampton probably would push charges against uh, Liverpool if they did try and get him. So they could sign him. I mean, that's reported where uh, Van Dijk wants to go. But of course, he wants European football. And he, he also name-checked... Well, he didn't really. He said top clubs. He didn't say club. So, you know, Chelsea, I don't think he turned down a move there. And they definitely need depth. Like... That's I, I was listening to Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard on BT Sport before the Community Shield, and um, yeah, like they made some really really good points about Chelsea, and yeah, I've been saying it for ages. Like they lack so much depth. They've loaned out players, which you just think why loaned or sold? Like uh, Zuma, I don't, I really don't understand why he's being loaned out. Like he's he's a quality player, he's quality. And you need a squad of players. You can't just have a start in XI. They sold Ake, which I think was a mistake. I know they got a decent fee in 20 million, but he was phenomenal when he was at Bournemouth. As soon as he left and went back to Chelsea, Bournemouth struggled. They slipped down the table a lot. Um, they, you know, Chalaba said that he was sick of getting loaned out. That's why he moved to Watford permanently. And uh, it's understandable he'd been loaned out six times. The chances were he was going to get loaned out again. And countless other youngsters. They sold Solanke. Uh, for for free, I, I believe there was some uh, some shit about his wages or something. So he went to Liverpool. He's had a good preseason there. So we'll see if he can uh, break into Liverpool's first team for the next season. Um, and there was also a Tammy Abraham, who, to be honest, I think should have been given a chance. Like certainly as a backup, I know he's getting Premier League experience. So he he's one that's had Championship loan, but he hasn't had a Premier League loan. So. You know, maybe after a Premier League loan, if he does well, then Chelsea will consider playing him. But it seems as though it's very hard to break into Chelsea's team. And it wasn't Jose Mourinho who was the problem there. Um, it seems as though it's just the way Chelsea do things. They sell most of their youngsters for uh, for profit. And Conte seems to be a bit annoyed with that. He wants depth. He wants more than they've got. Like, 
Uh, uh, to be honest, I've got to say, I think Chelsea are weaker than last season because they don't have as much depth. Matic and Costa were detrimental in two of their previous previous Premier League winners uh, wins, and of course Costa's getting forced out of the club. Uh, I, I believe it's because he wanted to move to China in January, and Conte wasn't having any of that, which is fair enough. But maybe that should have been dealt with. It's kind of unlucky on Chelsea's part that the club he wanted to go to, Atletico Madrid, obviously transfer ban, so that's put a little bit of a spanner into the works. So, you know, whether he goes out on loan prior to that, moves to Atletico Madrid now, waits six months, we'll have to wait and see. But that's certainly disrupted Chelsea's uh, transfer plans. Also selling Matic, I think that was a big mistake. I'm happy they did because it's to us. But, yeah, like Bakayoko's untested. As of right now, there is no chance he's better than Matic. Like, not a chance. I'm not having any of that bullshit. No way. Like, he, he's, he's untested in the Premier League and he could be a better player. But we'd have to see. He needs a lot of work, a lot of development. And, uh, yeah, I think they need more in midfield. They definitely need depth. Because at the minute, they've just got Kante, Bakayoko, who's injured at the minute, but should be fit soon enough. And Fabregas, really. They don't have anyone else. They don't have any other depth. They could do with another wing-back. Moses, Alonso have done really, really well. Uh, that's why I think if they get Van Dijk, it will be a good signing for them. A, a tremendous signing because they use three centre-backs. And, again, they loaned out Zuma. They've got rid of Ake so they need some depth I know they've got Christiansen but they need someone else so getting Van Dijk in there could help uh, to put Azpilicueta as a wing back so he compete with Marcus Alonso and give them a little bit more depth in the left wing back spot and then that just leaves the right wing back to try and like get another player in to compete with Moses but aside from that uh, on about loans Timothy Fosumensa uh, from Manchester United to Crystal Palace now um, it's a shame I did want to see him get some football this season at Man United and I think he can but Mourinho has, has done the right thing because what he said is that he sees him as a long-term successor to Antonio Valencia and Valencia was phenomenal last season uh, back end of last season he had a little bit of fatigue but for the majority of it he was absolutely tremendous and he's definitely got a year or two left in him so by sending Timothy Fosumens out to a Premier League club where he's going to get game time. It's going to help his development. He'll be able to improve. Instead of sitting on the bench having the odd game at United, I'll prefer him to get games. And Mourinho said he is in his long-term plans. And he's shown with Rashford, uh, Twanzebe, Pereira, the other Pereira, our goalkeeper, Lingard. You know, he's playing youth. He is giving them a chance. And uh, it's nice to see. And I think him and Andres Pereira will break into our team. Uh, Pereira this season. Uh, he, he's been good in uh, pre-season, but for Semenza, he'll get the loan out, he'll come back, and he'll be a stronger player. So I don't really have a problem with that at all. Um, and then there's the, the big rumours that uh, Mourinho obviously said in his press conference about Bale. Um, a lot of people think are thinking it's mind games, and it probably is a little bit, but there's no way we don't have interest in Bale. It's just always been the same thing. Like, we're not going to try and sign Bale. We're not going to bid or whatever if there's no chance for it. Like, you know, in the past, the only Madrid player we've managed to get off uh, Real Madrid is Angel Di Maria, and that didn't turn out well. But, um, you know, with other players like Ramos, Ronaldo, they've used United to get better contracts or whatever. Like, I'm sure if Perez didn't want to give them their contracts or didn't, you know, uh, let them well, basically make amends or whatever, then I'm sure they would have moved to us like if they wanted. But they used us for their own benefit at Real Madrid. And we don't want that to happen with Real Madrid. Uh, sorry, with Gareth Bale. So Mourinho is basically hinting that, you know, if he isn't playing there, then it looks as though they're going to get someone like Mbappe. And then we'll, move, we'll make a move for him if Gareth Bale is not in Zinazine Zidane's plans. And it remains to be seen whether he is, especially if they get someone like Mbappe. I know there's all this thing about depth, but I think it was Marker reported, and it makes sense that Zidane would prefer one of BBC to be sold if they sign Mbappe, purely because he doesn't want to have the problems that arise with rotating and uh, the conflicts within the team. He thinks that would harm uh, the development of players or certainly the relationships in the squad, which is understandable. So... It looks as though because of his injuries that he's had in the past um, that it would be Bale who was sacrificed out of BBC. So again, we'll see. We play Real Madrid tomorrow, maybe today by the time I upload this video. It'll be a late upload, so I do apologise for that. But yeah, if he doesn't play, um, 
maybe we'll make a bid. That's definitely why we stole this Perisic deal because I know Inter want an astronomical fee, but in this day and age, 48 million for someone who's done, done phenomenally well in Calcio for the last four or five years is not a great deal in this market, to be honest. So there's no way we're haggling over a couple of million. So it's generally because we're waiting to see whether there is any concrete chance of us getting bail. If there is, we'll make a move for him. If there's not, we'll probably get Perisic or someone else. So yeah, bail would be a phenomenal signing. Even with his injury problems, I think he can overcome them. RVP had a few uh, prior to coming to United. And, you know, that turned out pretty well in uh, his first season. He won us the title pretty much single-handedly. Bale is a phenomenal player, world-class, and he'd be welcomed with open arms at United. But we'd have to wait and see. There's, of course, other deals. I think uh, Schneider went to Nice for free. Um, there's the proper signing, I think. Oh, God, who did he sign for? It was some Premier League team, I can't remember. Uh, I think he's a PSV goalkeeper. A couple of other... Smaller deals, uh, the Sigurdsson things gaining weight. We'll see what that happens, but I talked about that in the last episode. Also, another big transfer that I didn't really talk about last episode was uh, James Rodriguez to Bayern Munich uh, on a loan deal, which kind of I was surprised by that. Um, but I think it's a decent move for Bayern Munich. I mean, they've got unbelievable midfield options as it is. I know they've had a really poor preseason, but we'll see what they do in the actual season. Um, I don't know, like I, I don't know whether he'll just be moving from a bench to a bench or whether he'll get more game time. But you know, he's a good player, and uh, although there was interest supposedly from English clubs, I don't think it was concrete. And yeah, there's no way English clubs would have been able to get him for as cheap as what it was. Could rise to 35 million euros, like the bollocks. Like if he moved to a, a Manchester United or a Chelsea. That would be 70 million easily. So Bayern Munich, uh, they've, they've got a good deal there and he certainly strengthens their squad. And uh, it also offloads a player that Madrid, you know, weren't too keen on now with the Sengio and Isco coming into the team a bit more. So yeah, that was probably the biggest transfer that I didn't talk about last uh, episode. So hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video and yeah, peace.